Today I am going to demonstrate peritoneal dialysis, dialysate bag change with the Weiss Disconnect system. This is per Mount Carmel policy and procedure. Before beginning the procedure, it is important to make sure that the order is clarified. Peritoneal catheter dialysis is performed using aseptic technique and by registered nurses. The supplies that are needed to do the peritoneal dialysis is, of course, you need an IV pole. We have the dialyl fluid. We also have the CAPD disposable disconnect Y set. We have a mini cap. We have a outlook uh, clamp. We have a mask that the nurse will wear as well as the patient and any family members that are present. Also we have a CAPD uh, scale and then of course gloves. After assembling the equipment it's important to explain the procedure to the patient. I need to wash my hands with soap and water and also make sure that my work area is clean with a germicidal disposable cloth. This, my uh, supplies are assembled and now I'm going to uh, go to the patient and assess the catheter that the patient has inserted. As I'm looking at the catheter, I first recognize this tubing right here that is um, exiting from the patient is the tube that the, was uh, surgically implanted by the, the uh, surgeon. This attachment here is the transfer set that the patient has used at home. It is called Fresenius. And as I note this uh, catheter and transfer set, I am aware that it is not compatible with Mount Carmel Health System. So at this point in time, I am going to order from Central Distribution a Stay Safe Adapter. And I am also going to order a mini cap extension transfer set. The solution bag needs to be examined for any leaks or any abnormalities. We need to check the concentration and the expiration date. Here is the concentration and the expiration date is located up here in the left um, upper uh, area of the solution. Okay, I have just received my um, Stay Safe adapter and my transfer set from distribution. I first of all want to connect these two pieces together before I connect anything to the patient. I will pick up my Stay Safe adapter and I'm using aseptic technique and I'm going to connect it to the transfer set. Uh, using aseptic technique, I will put the small ends to get the small end of the adapter into the transfer set. At this point, I will make sure that the twist cap is closed. Now I am going to proceed to the patient and attach the Baxter transfer set. I'm going to remove all linen and any uh, debris that's in the way. At the end of the patient's transfer set, I'm going to remove the mini cap. Using aseptic technique, I'm going to attach the stay, sap, stay safe adapter to the patient's extension tubing. Now, I have finished all the connections and we're going to begin the perito peritoneal dialysis. Okay, I'm gonna place the solution bag on the IV pole and I am going to put the outlook port clamp in the appropriate area on the solution bag. After doing that, I'm gonna remove the tubing from the uh, package and clamping all of the clamps. I am now getting ready to connect the tubing.
First of all, I'm going to um, get the bag ready to be connected to the Y tubing. I'm going to pull that off using a septic technique, and I'm going to screw this into the bag. Okay, I'm also going to put the um, empty bag here on the chucks, which is next to the patient's bed. Now um, I'm going to connect to the patient, making sure that all clamps are closed here. They are closed. Um, I'm going to take this cap off, and using aseptic technique, I'm going to connect to the patient's transfer set. This um, whole procedure was just a setup, and now the procedure itself is going to begin. It's important to note after the connection is made um, that you can see the um, indentions on the connection site. Many people think this, that this is not correct, but this is exactly what it is to look like. The next step in this process is to prime the tubing. First of all, I would remove the um, outlet port clamp. After hanging the solution bag, I'm going to break the frangible. And this is going to allow the fluid to run through the tubings and prime the tubing. I am going to open up the fill clamp as well as the drain clamp, counting slowly to five, which allows 100 cc, approximately 100 cc's to flow into the drain bag. At this point, I will clamp the um, fill drain, fill clamp, and the drain clamp is still open. And at this point, I will go to the extension tubing and open up the twist tab. But it's also important too, I want everyone to know, that you have to make sure that every clamp on this extension tubing is open or else the dialysis cannot take place. So with all my clamps open, um, the effluent from the peritoneal cavity is able now to drain into the bag. The drain stage takes about 20 to 30 minutes and we want to uh, observe the fluid going into the bag, making sure that about approximately 80% returns to the bag. When the drainage is complete, I want to make sure that the drain clamp is clamped. I'm going to prepare to uh, measure the amount of fluid. And first of all, I want to make sure that the uh, scale is calibrated to zero. I am going to look at the solution, look at the color clarity. In this case, it is clear yellow. I'm going to take the bag and weigh, and it measures 2,500 cc's. Now I'm going to begin the installation of the fluid. This is the instill stage. I want to make sure that the drain clamp is closed. I'm going to look at the patient's catheter, making sure all clamps are open. And all clamps are open, so I'm going to now unclamp the fill clamp and allow the solution to instill. When the infusion is complete, we want to close the fill line clamp, and then we want to twist the clamp on the transfer set. We also want to make sure that the clamp on the Fresenius tubing is closed. Now I want to place a mask on myself and the patient, and what I'm going to do now is open up the um, sterile mini cap. What I'm going to do now is um, go to the patient's catheter, 
and I am going to disconnect from the uh, Baxter extension tubing using aseptic technique and we'll put the sterile mini cap on the transfer set. Now at this time I would put a um, make sure that the catheter is secure. It has a 4x4 four four secured by tape and now we would document our CAPD exchange on the peritoneal uh, sheet. In review, the, we have completed the infusion. We have um, closed up the extension tubing with the sterile mini cap. It is also important to note with this catheter, we have uh, the part that was surgically inserted. We have the Fresenius catheter that came with the patient itself into the hospital. Because that was not compatible with our uh, equipment at Mount Carmel, we had to apply a stay safe adapter and onto the stay safe adapter we would put the Baxter transfer set. And all of this, the transfer set would stay in place until the patient is discharged from the hospital. Okay, hi. I just want to clarify a few things about what you would do when you have to do your PD and you do not have the amount of solution that the doctor has ordered. So an example is, and very commonly is a practice, is that we get uh, the doctor orders 2,500 mLs to be instilled into the patient, and we do not stock, nor does Baxter manufacture, 2,500 mL bags. So what we have to do is we have to use the next size up. That would be a three liter bag. So this is common practice, not just with Mount Carmel, but this is our policy, and you need to be aware of it, that if you're going to do, what we have to do is we have to actually order the larger bag, and we have to have our graduated scale, and again, we calibrate it to zero and make sure that it is. And then you're gonna take that bag, but of course I'm not ready yet because I also have to put my tubing together. So I have to go ahead and I have to get my tubing ready. I used my Y-set disconnect tubing. I opened it up, I've got my clamp shut. I'm doing that. Then with my lure lock end, I'm gonna connect to my bag and also I should have my outlet port clamp on which I have failed to do but I'm going to do right now so this is policy you guys you really do want to have your outlet port clamp and it's just for that reason and it was I put it on late you're supposed to put it on before you connect to the bag and that's the only reason you have it and that's the only time you need it it can be removed at this point kind of crazy but that is the policy so you do have to order that now what I need now to do always once you have connected to your bag, you need to connect to your patient. Now this time we want you to see what the demonstration looks like with Baxter tubing. This is our Baxter tubing. This is the end piece we normally use. I would of course have a mask on. I would wash my hands. My patient would have a mask on. I'm just gonna demonstrate to you good aseptic technique, how we would normally do it. Connect as to that. Again, this little blue ridge piece is gonna be exposed. That is normal. People tend to think that it's not on right. Here is where you lock and unlock your Baxter. It's up here on this white connection here. It screws and unscrews. That's opening and closing the tubing. This piece right here, the blue ridge between the light blue and the white, that is the Baxter setup. It is how it's supposed to look. And I want people to be well aware of that, that that is the normal and it's what I want it to look like. All right, so now once we've connected to the patient, the next process is we have to prime our tubing. So there's two methods that we prime with. Either we connect it with a five second flush, or prime, however you want to call it, or you connect it with what I say the 500 ml. Because remember, the doctor ordered 2,500 and we don't have 2,500, we have 3,000 here. So I've already calibrated to zero. Take the bag over to your spring scale and now you're gonna drain directly down into your drain bag, shiny side up, okay? To the floor on your chucks or a towel, if that's what you gotta use. Your patient line is clamped, so we're clamped off here, but I want my fill line and my drain line open because now I'm doing the prime. So the only thing different from when we showed it earlier is this time, instead of the five second count, I'm gonna take this and watch the scale go from, it was a little over, it was a little over 3,000, and now we're gonna take it up to the 2,500. So, but it failed, I didn't break the frangible. So it's not going anywhere. Now it's working. <laughs> 
and it should be draining now because I have my clamps open and there is fluid going down there so now we're going to watch it and once we get from the 3000 to the 2500 then we're going to stop the clamp and we'll now have the ordered amount that we're to give but what's critical is when you do this that you remember that the fluid that you put down into that drain bag never ever went into the patient it went down to the drain bag so it cannot be included on your flow sheet INOs because it never went in to the peritoneum. It was strictly a prime. So we don't include that. So you have to mentally subtract that from your INO numbers when you're doing your output, your input and output on the INO on the flow sheet, the PD flow sheet. Okay, so I am now at the 2500 on there on the scale. That's the ordered amount. So I'm going to shut that off. I definitely want to shut the drain clamp because now, now what I have here, this is a prime. If you want to be really good about it, you can go over and take your primed amount and put it on that zero. And again, it's not on zero. I've got to recalibrate it. Get it to zero. Take this amount up and weigh this. This is the amount that you know never went into that patient. And let me see if I can get it to the camera. Well, it's, it's not, yeah, it's still not very much. It's only a little bit over 100, it looks like. So that amount is what I would need to subtract then from my flow sheet later when I actually document how much I drained out. So, okay, well, all I did was I prepped. Now we're ready to start the rest of the process, which is the next, the very first phase is to drain. So all we're going to do then, of course, is make sure this one's closed, but we want our drain clamp open and we want our patient line open because we want the fluid to move from the belly now down here to the drain. So this is our first phase. We have to drain the patient. So he's now set to drain. Normally the drain phase can be anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. If you're having trouble with draining, you want to roll your patient side to side. You want him to do vagal or Valsalva maneuvers. You want him to sit up. The higher he sits up, the better he drains. So all these different techniques. Also, if they're having trouble going in or out with the fluid, a good chance is it's constipation. So always want to verify if they're constipated or not. When was the last time they had a bowel movement? Okay, so they go ahead and go through their phase again. And this is the drain. They completely drained out. So then we're going to shut off our drain line. And we'll just say this drain bag was completely filled. And then at the end of the drain, you're going to bring it back up to your calibrated scale. And you're going to weigh it. And that's, remember, whatever you got, let's say you got 2,500, you still would have to subtract that amount that, you, that I got earlier that I said was a little over 100 from your total output because that never went in the patient. So you have to recall that, okay? And then we're ready to go on with the rest of the exchange, which would be now that we've drained them, we can now put the fluid in, which is called the fill. So then we would open up the fill line and we'd open up the Baxter clamp, which is already opened, and we let the fluid flow in. And the frangible is broken, so it should all go. And it would be a heated bag. It would have been heated up on the K-pad before we ever started. And then that takes another anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes usually to go in. Again, if you're having trouble with it going in, it is related oftentimes to positioning. It could be the catheter is clamped internally. Um, you can ask the patient to bear down, cough and deep breathe, do the Valsalva again. Uh, turn, always turning and repositioning. Again, also ask when's the last time they had a bowel movement. Make sure it's not constipation. If none of that works, you're still having trouble getting the fluid to go in, you can squeeze the top of the bag and use pressure to try and get it to go in. If none of that works, then you need to call the physician and let them know that the fluid's not going in. But normally the fluid will go in anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, usually in that range. And once it's totally in, then you're pretty much done. You're ready to can't clamp everything off and cap them off with the mini cap. And I guess I'll just do a quick demo of that. So we'll just say this is empty. This is completely full. We've done our exchange and we did it this time just with a simple Baxter tubing. So I will wash my hands, have a mask on. He'll have a mask. Using aseptic technique, and people do put gloves on too. You can put gloves on for your protection because uh, sometimes you get definitely betadine from these connections. But uh, simply, I like to just drop the tubing. I'm done with that. 
put on my mini cap using the aseptic technique. And then of course, after I'm done, make sure you tape and secure it so that this tubing doesn't get pulled and tugged while they're in the bed or any, any time. It should always be taped and secured when uh, you're done with the exchange. And that's it.